And Sammy, I know that you've made some highs and plays in the past. You got a, a great number, I believe, on my, Michael Penix. He's now co favored with Caleb Williams at around plus 350 or so to, uh, to, to win the award. I don't think Williams is going to win. I know you got a great number, like I said, on Penix. What'd you get on Penix? And do you still think he's worth the play at plus 350? I don't know about that, Bear. I hate to come on here and pass post, too, but I've been in this Washington bucket for a couple of weeks now, and Penix was 7-1 to one about two weeks ago, and now, you know, you could find a 4-1 to one in Vegas if you shop around. If you have a buddy in Vegas, you could always, you know, get down that way, but he's the best player on what could be the most exciting team in the Pac-12, and, and we've talked about this. You know, everybody loves USC, and there's a lot of love for Oregon, and Utah looks really good, and Colorado finally fizzled out, but Washington is still sort of underrated as a team. And, you know, he's throwing for like 400 yards a game. And, you know, their aerial attack is legit. Um, I think your point about Caleb Williams is is right on. We've only had one repeat Heisman winner ever, and that's Archie Griffin back in the mid-70s. So the voters have fatigue when it comes to giving it to the same guy back-to-back years. I think this Penix kid, I don't know how good he's going to be in the NFL, but he is clearly the most electric quarterback in the country right now in terms of throwing the ball deep and getting those big chunk plays. And every time he throws the ball, he's a threat to throw a touchdown. I think he's going to get like 5,000 yards, 45 touchdowns. And if that's the case, it's going to be hard to beat Michael Penix. Yeah, I know Jeff and I like Jordan Travis before the year. He's down to what, 12, 13 to one. I mean, he hasn't looked great, but no team has a more impressive resume than, than Florida State with their two wins with LSU and then uh, at the road on the road against Clemson, which, uh, look, we, we talked about it last week. That was one of the most predictable things of the week is Dabo trusting his kicker too much and, and botching the <laughs> clock and, and giving that game away. So, look, I, I don't know that I see a great bet on the board right now. I think as these markets become more and more mainstream, they just shrink the numbers knowing we want to bet it. I, I'm curious what you guys think. If you had nothing in pocket right now, do you guys see like a great number right now? Because I don't know that I do. Yeah, I, I don't know if I do. Like, I'm looking down the board. I, like, Sam Hartman, if they would have beaten Ohio State last week, might have been a play. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, Michigan's offense hasn't been great. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, Miami still undefeated. Cam Ward, I don't think anybody thinks Wazoo's going to go undefeated. So it, it it might be Quinn Ewers, or it could be maybe Dylan Gabriel, if, if the winner of that Red River game next week. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds, and let's celebrate all of our wins together.